very much teaching to her too. I met him first time when I came to teach him in 1986. He has been my teacher, he has been my colleague, he has been my friend. Please help me welcome to the microphone Dr. Ayman Black, a.k.a. Don D, Chancellor of the Rastafari University of Higher Life Learning. He's also a lecturer at, in cultural studies at the University of the West Indies and host of a very provocative and entertaining talk show called The Metamorphosis, and that's aired on Styles FM. His lecture is entitled, Exploring the Six Days before Adam and Eve. Interesting. Put your hands together and welcome Dr. Ivan Black. And a um, special greeting to the students and to all others who are part of this audience. Um, Black History Month is closing now. They have one more day for us. And um, after this, we're supposed to return to ourselves next February. And the whole notion of um, Black History is relevant, I think though the population is so vast in numbers of black people. But there seems to be an absence of consciousness as to whether we should claim our blackness, or claim being brown, or claim being Jamaican, or Jamaican, African, all these various hyphenations. My contribution to the presentation has to do with our story, but I'm concerned more about not just black history in terms of who our great black people have been and what they have done. I'm sort of concerned with the, our history before, before, before we are given the narrative in this particular book. In the history of black people, this is a highly significant book. It's a book that they, was used by the colonizers, particularly on the plantations, to get across certain ideologies, certain teachings, certain beliefs. This particular book that I hold, the Holy Bible, is almost in everybody's homes. And you're either a Christian or you're a Muslim. We have been divided into these two major groups. The Muslim would have a Quran, and that would be his holy book, his Bible. The Christians have this. And so this has been embedded into our psyches for hundreds of years. It has gotten to the point where there are persons now who can quote this without thinking. They make references and cliches without thinking. This is the most important book that has been put on us. Now, when we think about black history, how do we locate ourselves in the history not just of black people, but in the history of the earth itself. The bigger planet. How do we look at ourselves in the history of the planet? Where are we in the narrative? How do we look at ourselves before the creation story? In other words, we have been given the mythology that we have been created. And this is a book that holds our story of creation. It tells us about our beginning. Now, is this story, the beginning of black history. Can we find the beginning of our history in this book? That is one of the questions we're posing. Now, without challenging whether the book is so or not so, 
there is a certain type of historical approach that we can use to examine history. We have fields such as astronomy, we have biology, we have psychology, we have anatomy, we have physiology, we have a set of disciplines, sociology, psychology, that we can use to explore time and space. So this reasoning now is trying to address the important sense that is called the sixth sense. Now in the education system, you are told that you have five senses. Mostly agree? Yes. Five senses. We know them. Seeing, hearing, smelling, touching, tasting. And all of those senses has an organ that is responsible for receiving the sensation. So you can see with your eyes, you see, with your ear to hear, with your nostrils to smell, with your tongue you taste, what do you feel with? You feel with your skin. So that's it, right? But they have left out the most important sense. Which is? They don't have it also. There's a common sense. No, the organ. Which is the most important organ for sensing? Thank you. Say it. The brain. Now, in your education system, you're not told that the brain is a sense organ. You're not told that you can develop your brain. You can develop your imagination, your intuition. You're not told about the powers and the faculties of the brain. I want to use this lecture now to penetrate the dimensions of philosophy and psychology by using our brain. Okay, so we want to get the brain into a certain mode now, to think. Because part of the problem of our black people is that we were not really encouraged to think. We were encouraged to recite and to memorize, but not to think. Because thinking means you have to exercise judgment, you have to have information, you have to come to conclusions. Okay, now I'm saying all that to say, if this book is the book of the world, and it, has, it is a history book, then we want to look at our, how do we view the history before the creation of Adam and Eve. In other words, let us accept the story that Adam and Eve were the first creation. What I want us to do now is explore the so-called days that led up to that creation. How do we as black people pick ourselves? How do we locate ourselves in that particular discourse? Do we accept the writings that have been given to us or do we use our own brain to explore that particular story? Now, again, this is a book. And in Genesis, I will only explore one page one chapter, one page of this book, and one chapter. Now going into this whole thing. We know that this is a collection of serious amount of writings by many, many writers. This is limited. Some have been removed by the authors who were King James. He removed some of the books and put the books in that were more relevant to maintaining control. But one of the books that remain is the book of Genesis. And the book of Genesis speaks to the beginning. The beginning. Beginning of black people? Or the beginning of the world? What beginning? Now, in order to explore the concept of the beginning, and if you look into the Genesis, the first four words says in three letters, says in the beginning. I'm gonna pause here for a second. And we're gonna have to exercise our thoughts using philosophy and psychology to investigate the concept of a beginning. What does it mean to say in the beginning? Beginning of what? Beginning of who? So when we use philosophy and psychology, we have to engage you know, the concept of time. When we say beginning, it refers to a starting point, a beginning. But is there any real beginning in time? How do we view the concept of time? Does time have a beginning? Does time have an end? And can there be time without the dimension of space? So we're looking at these two dimensions, just to resolve the first question in the beginning. We're going to look at the dimension of time and the dimension of space. And as African people, black people, 
If we're going to talk about reality now, we have to ground our realities in certain dimensions. And the two important dimensions to ground our reality is in time and in space. You must can say when, and you must can answer the question where to define a certain level of reality. When, where. But the Africans, in our teaching, we get things, and we don't know when it happened. We don't know where it happened. What we say it happened? And we defend it to the death. And we say, where it happened? Why, some time ago. Where? Why, what was We must move beyond that and become more precise in our information. So, the Africans have their own concept of time. So do the Europeans. So if we were to say, we're going to explore the notion of time, what is the African concept of time? And what is the European concept of time? The European concept of time is what we call a linear version. It's linear. Time moves along a straight line. So you can move from the past into the present, into what is called a future. That's how we get it to look at time. There's an African concept of time that speaks of the Zamane and the Sasa. It means the past and the present. And that concept of time shows that time moves not forward, but time moves backward. In other words, what happens in the present goes where? Into the past. So there's a perception of time moving backwards. And things will move towards where it's coming from. So there's the idea of a cycle. And within the cycle, there is really no beginning, conceptually. A cycle is at the beginning, and a cycle has no end. So when we're exploring our story and our history, do we as black people have a beginning? And where do we begin as a people? So we get the story. We get the story, we get the book. The second line, second part of the sentence says, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, nearly every child who is a Christian has this line riveted in themselves. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And we have that, and we never think about it. It's almost like automatic. But if we begin to ask ourselves, what is the heavens and what is the earth? We have to go to astronomy. We begin to go into research of astronomy. And when we begin to explore the heaven and the earth concept, we recognize that we are on a planet. The planet is being supported by energy from a sun. That there are other planets between ourselves and the sun. That our planet is in a rotation that is called an orbit. And that the planet is in a movement around the sun that is called a revolution. And so we begin to recognize now that this concept of the heaven and the earth is a vast expanse of space. To the point where we ask ourselves a question, can you drop out of space? The Europeans in the 1400s thought they could drop off of the planet Earth because they thought the Earth was flat. The same people in Macadam who come teach me. The same people who come and teach us at one time thought the Earth was flat. When the Moors had already taught the Spanish that they could sail. That's that they could circumnavigate the earth because it was a sphere. So we also said the question, and we have to think clearly without any fears. Because if you think fearfully, you will just crash. Anatomy, physiology, psychology, we have all of these disciplines. We can exercise them. So we talk about the heaven and the earth. And when we look around into the atmosphere, we see what is configured to be a solar system. Is there anything bigger than the solar system? There are galaxies. There are galaxies that, are, that have billions of stars. Billions of stars. And these things are supposed to be in existence before the creation of man, according to the story. This is what it is all about. So we have to visualize a vast, vast amount of space and time and begin to question and know whether this will happen in one day. What is a day in our knowledge? It's one rotation of the planet Earth. That's a day and a night, one rotation. 
Are, are we not to accept in ourselves that the changes that we're going to experience and what the Earth will go through will take place in one rotation? We will think about it. Because the concept of a day, recognize it now, is not just about sunrise and sundown. We could use the word eras. And the scientists speak about eras, the geological eras that make up the life of the planet. So, that is day one. We have to go to the day first. Eh? So the story continues, that the earth was without form. And we think that means the earth had no life on it. And void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. So we have had British discussing this for years. What does it mean to say that darkness was upon the face of the deep? What was the deep? And what is this powerful thing called darkness that we have now become very afraid of? It is right here in the beginning that darkness is an important force. Now, we continue a little further and it says, Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. What is it that most people think of in that statement? Talk about the sun. But light could also mean intelligence. Because the language here now becomes metaphorical. Not everything that is written in this particular story is literal. What about difficulty? The difficulty is that we're not experienced in the language sometimes to unlock what these things mean, so we don't bother read it. We just jump over it and we leave it for others to explain to us what, we, what they think it means. We are going to exercise our own thoughts and deal with it a couple of days. Now, without looking at text directly, we hear that there's a creation of things on the planet Earth. We are told that to believe that these things happen in one rotation of the Earth. And I'm saying to you now, we are adults. Some of you are scientists. Some of you are biologists. You know about cells. You know about the multiplication of cells moving from singular cells to multilayered cells to developing of tissues, to develop organs. Now, these things certainly are not happening in one day. And in order for the earth to have life on it, the book tells you that there was a sequence of creation events. One of the most important ingredients for life is water. And so the planet, according to the story, was given, separated between land and sea. The first forms of life on this planet emerged on the, in the sea. One of the most critical plant life, critical lives that we must have is plants. Why plants? Because plants give us the environment that we can breathe. Plants give us food, plants give us oxygen through photosynthesis. The life of the plant is over 10,000, 50,000. The life of the plant takes millions of years to evolve. So what I'm saying to the island now, Within the construct of this Genesis story, we have to begin to open our time zone from six 24-hour periods to recognize that we're into the thousands or we're into the millions of years of evolution. Evolution of animal life, of plant life, the birds, the reptiles, all of these life forms took thousands and thousands of years to evolve. So we don't want to be locked now into this six-day, six-day construct of the planet that we live on. We must recognize the lifetime of the planet. It is millions and millions of years old. What does it say about black people? Are we also millions and millions of years old? Can we embrace an idea? Or are we still locked up in the 6,000 concept of the Genesis? Because the Genesis gives you the impression that the Earth is only 6,000 years old. And we as black people, we can't fit into it. The Egyptians were here for 10,000 years. So we cannot fit into this story that has been given to us for the last 2,000 years. It's about time we use our intelligence and begin to query this six day magnificent thing where all of a sudden everything is here in six days. Yeah, we must think it was a little bit clearer. No, I won't go much longer, but I want to come to the point now. So the creator creates this earth, separates land from sea, put fish in the sea. No, the whale is the biggest animal. 
that never grew in a one day. Yeah, Jesus. Hey, that's another story. That. If we begin to think about the thing practically, time has to be expanded. We have to expand the concept of time. We have to begin to interrogate where the time itself really has a concept called a beginning. You know that there is a theory in energy. Any, any science physicists here? What does it tell you about energy? It says energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Energy can only be transformed. So in a real sense, energy has always existed. There is no beginning of energy. So space, time, these dimensions have always been here. In other words, though, we ask ourselves the first question, you know, where we come from? Nearly everybody asks them question, where, the, where the first man come from? Where the, where the first woman come from? Where the, this concept of the first, I was boggled. And most of us cannot move beyond that to recognize that there is no first, because there has always been. Not easy to digest. Not easy to digest. So it goes. So for three, four, five days, we are told that there is a creation taking place. Animals, fish, bird. And guess what happened now? These things are not being made in a pair, you know. These things are made in wholesome groups. So a herd of sheep, a flock of birds. This is the type of creation. These are probably when we finish everything up. Because on the seventh day, what, 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 what the Lord God says, on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done on the seventh day. And he rested on the seventh day from all the works which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Because in it he rested. Him and all his work, which God had created and made. So now, on the seventh day, everything is made, including man. Including man. But if you read the story about the creation of man, black people now must ask a very serious question. This is before Adam and Eve, you know, because the story says, he made man, let us make man. Male and female created he them. This is before Adam is being made. Then man, me, the Bible said that. Don't make up a face, you know. Let me tell you exactly where it said that. Genesis 1. Remember, we're not going too far in the book, you know. Just one page right there. Genesis 1. Verse 26, and it said, Then God said, Let us make man in our image. Now, as a student of English, when I hear us, I think of a plural noun. So I see right away God is a plural. Yeah, God not singular. Because God said, Let us make man in our image. Our again is not a singular thing. So the impression here is that it's more than one really putting the thing together. No, black people know it's man or woman the things, you know. <laughs> we know it's man or woman make everything, you know. We know it's no man alone can make nothing. We know this historically a million of years. We know that it's the male and the female that makes things creative. But here we are now in the story. God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. What does our mean? So it's, it's who and God at all. <laughs> God and his wife, maybe. <laughs> you see, we have to factor in the female principle in creation. Come again? Maybe it's all like you are not sure. Maybe it's all like you are not sure. None of us are sure. None, none of us are here. <laughs> it's a story that we are reading. What we're using now is our brain and our imagination and our intellect, and these capacities now to explore the story. Yeah? So it goes on to say, God said, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth and everything that creeps. And so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female created he them. This is before. Adam and Eve make. I said to the Adam, no. You see, these male and females who are make is black people. 
is we this in the Bible. And we were told to go out and multiply and replenish the earth. And we did. And so we saw Chinese and we saw Indians out of evolution of the skin. Through evolution of our skin, we have these different looking nations, but they all have seen, share the same culture. The Chinese and the Indians share the same culture as African people. We have Chinese food, African dance, the other culture, we have the same culture. So I'm just giving a diversion now of this book. That the African people were created before Adam and Eve. Is not I man said that? It in the story. It said, let us make man in our image, and man was given the instructions to go out and multiply and replenish the earth. The man that it speaks about here is a capital M. Because in the language, capital M means everybody, male and female. So this is the interpretation. And I would like the ones that to really just reflect on this long, drawn out story that we have been forced to believe, that we have been locked now into the idea of Adam and Eve now. So watch it, look at this, this is my final point. Now, we come into the Western world, we know this history, we know that we are the ancients, we are the originators, we've been Spain, we've been everybody knowledge. Now we return to the situation of enslavement, and we are told now that the first man did name Adam. And you black women never exist. It's forget, Lord God forget to make woman. And Adam got honey. <laughs> and he decided to make a female, as a servant. This is what we black people now must internalize as our reality. So you now black woman, we no longer see you as a queen. You lose your divinity because the pain also you come out of our race. When in the ancients you have our knowledge, I and you have always been here. I and you have always been here. We are the man, we are the male and the females that were sent out to multiply and replenish the earth. So we have, the story has been reverted and now all black people now come out of a man named Adam who couldn't control himself, who was tricked by a woman who came out of his ribs and a host the confusion take place. Yeah man, and you can't trust her now because woman is evil. And this is where the mythology is created. And it's created a serious effect on black people because we internalize the book literally. We have it as a literal truth. Final point. The generation of Adam and Eve were all drowned out. All drowned out. In the same Genesis story. One book, one flood comes, everybody drowned. <laughs> Thousands of years of black people's history. Truth gone down. So here we are again now. We lost again. How do we start our history again? Remember now, you know, this book here of the story, you know, we tell you about a man named Noah. Yeah? I know I'm 120 years old. <laughs> Bill of Ark. I'm going with a magnifying glass and look for two mosquitoes. Two ants, male and female. Two butterflies, male and female. Yeah, and that is what we want to imagine. Not sure. <laughs> what about the birds? Did he capture two of all the birds? You know about the pterodactyls in the bird age, the giant birds? So where were those birds at that time? What about the dinosaurs? How do the dinosaurs fit into black understanding of time? Were there in Noah's Ark or the drone up before the Ark? Where were we as a people? We have re-explored these stories. So, after Adam come, Adam people drown out, it leaves no one. Here it is now. Black people, we have to find our existence now, you know. And we have to link it up to no one's ask, and we said, oh, we're washed away, right? We have to drown out, you know. So, you know, God's word. So the Bible says, don't tell it, don't question the Bible, my God. What it say? No, what did it say? Go can read it. You want to find the quotation? The whole of them drawn out. Yeah, yeah, man. Eight people left. They must say the whole world drawn out except these eight people. So we black people now, we have to come out of that whole end. Can you know where they come from? No. For 40 days and 40 nights, the black up in a ship with no ventilation, no hygiene, no sunshine, no food, no medicine, no hygiene. 
You have people locked up in that for 40 days or 40 nights. The disease and germs in there. Animals. What about the animals and their excretions? 40 days and 40 nights. Who could live in that? Anyway, it's a story. When the thing done and the water has dried up, according to the story, what did the man do? Let out two birds. A black one and a white one. What happened to the black one? What happened to the white one? No, I don't know. Which one come back? One of the black one. Last. <laughs> black one last, don't come back. Why did you So look at me. There are other symbolisms in the story. We have to re examine this story to see if black people comfortably fit into the story. So finally, now, the ark crashed in a mountain of Turkey. In Mount Ararat, so the Bible say. So imagine now, you know, after 40 days and 40 nights, all the pyramids in Donald Trino, they know the world will come up. All Mount Everest, everywhere has water. Take the water. Yes. Right. Who will water? No, where will so much rain come from? We know that rain is about condensation, it's about water rising and falling. So we don't know where so much will come from to cover all Mount Everest. However, we buy the story. When it is over, the ship landed in Turkey. That's what the Bible said. It landed on Mount Ararat in Turkey. Black people find themselves now enough. So we supposed to come in out of that ark in Turkey. Who are we in that ark? Who don't tell me say we? They say we is the son of Ham. We are the son of we are one of Noah's son. Noah had four sons, three sons. One was called Hashem, our shame. One was called Ham, our hate, and Japheth, our jealousy. I think that those are the three characteristics. But Ham is who they say is the, for the father now of black people. And guess what happened to him? Him father cursed him. Him say, You shall be a servant unto your brother's first of your life because you're coming and see me doing some nastiness. That's so how the story goes. And so the story tells us that black people now have been cursed. And some of us believe it. Some of us internalize it now and say, because we're black, why we're cursed? And we accustom somebody to them, say so them black like sin. And we curse in the most destructive ways around blackness. And guess where it's coming from? The Holy Bible. It is the Holy Bible that carries those ideologies, those philosophies. We want the ones that to begin to explore time and space and those other dimensions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Ivan Black. Are there any questions? I'm sure there are questions. How about difficulty? Very, very provocative lecture. Exploring the six days before Adam and Eve. Any questions? They are saying that we were cursed. No, we're not saying that. The Bible, the Bible, to the interpretation. They are saying that when you got from the Bible, we were cursed. Right, right. Um, is it possible you got it from the Bible also that in this curse that made us black? For we were black before. Okay. Okay. But you recognize that um, black people have been here on the earth as black people long, long before the story was written. And that we are the ones who actually have given the earth history and knowledge. So I think all blackness has always been here. It is trying to attribute negative things now to ourselves being black. Even in the literature, the devil. Anybody ever say a white devil? No. Nobody ever say a white devil. When you eat, you have a thing called angel food cake. Yeah. And you know devil food cake. Yes. The difference is one is white and one is black. So there, for the last 2,000 years or more, there's been a campaign to make everything black, negative. Even the male is called a black male. <laughs> yeah? I you know what that made me. Yeah. My one question. I hope I, hope, I hope answered you. 
I want to tell you, I think it was an attempt to really demoralize us as a people. And um, we have been black ever since. And a matter of fact, when we talk about blackness people, it's not just about the color now, you know. What makes us black is something that's in our brain. It's an organ in our brain called the pineal gland. P-I-N-E-A-L. That is the organ that makes the melatonin, which is the hormone that makes us black. Yeah, melatonin. So we are melanin people. So the Indian and the Chinese and the Africans, we are melanin people. You call a Chinese man a yellow skinned man. He's not a white man. He has melanin yellow. The Indian has a melanin brown. We are melanin black. So we're all melanin people. And if you look into the world, the melanin people who are being oppressed by the people of Europe. So all blackness is not about shades. So when a person bleach, thinking that they're gonna look less, black. less black, you're also killing what your pigment of your own skin. So you're killing what the memories that the melanin store. You're destroying your own psyche because black people store memories in our skin. So we could defend our skin and defend our blackness from a different perspective. My question, how are we going to see more males here? That is my question. Yeah, how is it we're not seeing the males in search of knowledge of themselves? I, I am I'm a university, a university where I lecture. Seven out of ten students are females. So we come here now, we say one out of Yeah. So you see the women now, hear me, they talk to me directly now. You see, when you get the knowledge, man, I'm going to follow back a woman. You see, when you get the knowledge, man, we follow back a woman. You see, when they get it, nobody will listen. It's only time now to leave, but not, be, but not by being a bully. As the women acquire education, don't oppress the man then because I wouldn't do your uncle, or you wouldn't do your auntie, and wouldn't do your granny long time ago. We need a consciousness that helps the youth them. Help the males come into the moon blackness. That's part of the process. Any questions at all? All right, thank you very much. Yeah, I'm on black. I have skipped over a segment, Dr. Dean. And I'd like you to come and let us do that aspect of it. It's a launch of the Rasta University of Higher Life Law, Higher Life Learning Center. So I want you to tell us more about those things that you are about to learn. Thank you, Mr. Um, the Rasta Farah University of Higher Life Learning is not an organization that is set out to necessarily sit people down in front of us and tell them things. It's about actually bringing people in to share their research, their information with those who are in the public. So it's a sort of outreach, open university. It's about production. It's about self-reliance. So one of the projects that we have undertaken towards our self-reliance is to create a product that we can put on the market. We realize that for the last 50 years, the colors of red, green, and gold have been used by every group to advance their financial cause. In other words, they have a kind of appropriate Rastafari symbols and decided to develop the economics around it. The university now here has seen the movement and recognized that I and I ought to be doing something, something similar. So our first creation out of our own initiative is a Rasta pen. This Rasta pen, you shall see it in, in, in Zimbabwe in a few years, you shall see it in Ethiopia, and you should see all where people are of African orientation. The pen has a set of writings on it. There's a Jamaica map to identify our land. The map is in red, green, and gold. And there's a quotation that's important to us at the university, a quotation by Marcus Garvey, that tells us about the importance of education. It's a medium by which the people prepare for the creation of their own civilization and the advancement of the glory of their own race. So we're putting these out and we're asking for support. We don't want to buy, we don't want to go and beg nobody for your contribution. We think it's better to make something and offer it on sale and ask for our support in that process. The, the Bob of Shanti, which is one organization of Rastafari, they make a lot of brooms. We are kind of moving beyond the broom into pens and pencils 
and books. And we are also proposing to have a monthly being published by us every month. We have writers here, any students who have writing that they think they want the public to have, you can give it to us, we do the editing, and we get your works out into the public. On Facebook, we have 900 people attached to our Facebook right now. This presentation will be YouTube up. So the world will see you. Some of you are nice looking, some of you are not, but the world shall see you. The world shall see you. So we are, we are promoting ourselves to our own industry. We think industry is an important initiative, lacking in Rastafari, industry. We think industry should also be applied to hemp. We are promoting the industrialization of hemp, not the legalization of smoking ganja. Our position at the university is that hemp should be industrialized to develop economics. The ganja thing is a smoke screen. And Rastafari have been persecuted for the smoke for so long. There is no financial benefit from the pharmaceutical level for Rastafari or the people on the ground. We think if you go along the hemp line, everybody will benefit. You get a crop every three years. There are 2,500 products that can be made from hemp. What was it? 2,500 products. Paper, oil, fiber, you name it, you have it. Why are we chasing the guns of smoke? I say, leave the police them, make them go on, terrorize people with ganja, let us develop hemp. Yes, in Portland, we are trying to find a little space for a pilot project okay. to grow one acre of hemp, invite the police and the media to understand the difference, that you don't harass a man because he's growing hemp and he looks like ganja. They are from the same family you now. One is a brother, one is a cousin. One can smoke, one can smoke. Yeah. If you smoke hemp, it will be a split, big like a light pole. <laughs> yeah, big light pole split out of hemp. Forget a little buzz, so you don't smoke. The psychoactive property in it, THC, is 0 0.03. It is not functional. In the smoking ganja, it is the THC that makes the ganja do to you what it does. So when we know the difference, we begin to promote hemp as the way for our economic liberation. And the pen now, you must buy a pen. You must buy a pen. And the cost. You know, you know the cost. You know the cost now. Give the cost now. It's a contribution. A dollar fifty. Dollar fifty. School is price one dollar. We are flexible. One hundred. One dollar. We talk in Jamaica language. One dollar. The beautiful, the beautiful thing about the pen now. You see what it say on it? It's a little ink finish. You will not throw it away. You're not going to throw it away. You have an ink done. And we are coming with a series, so the next page will have a different statement. And eventually you want to collect the series, don't you? No. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you can support us if you can, one dollar. And for those who are not schoolers, a dollar fifty. If you want a dollar fifty and you're in a straight clothes, put on a uniform quick. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Ayman Black. All right. What we're going to now is the segment where we um, have the Rasta University of Higher Life Learning Chancellor Speaks. So that will be the final segment before we close this lecture presentation and before we move into our Black History Dub and Dialect uh, competition. So, gentlemen. I want, I want to thank you all for coming. One of the first universities that was launched in the world is the University of Salamanca. And one of the first cities that had city universities was in Timbuktu. Ancient Africa has always featured and figured large in world civilization. So much so that every time they find any fossil that gives an idea of our whole, of our whole humanity is, it's in Africa. We should be proud of our African heritage. If there is Mr. What's the man from NCB? Michael Leachin. We say he's Chinese Jamaican. 
If we see Henry Kiss, we say they are Lebanese Jamaica. But we only say the black man is Jamaican. We're African Jamaicans. If you claim your nationality, there's no shame in that. But you have to claim your heritage. So the Rastafari University of Higher Learning, speaking from the Chancery, is going to try everything that we can to expose you to new ways of thinking and new ways of learning. Thank you for coming out, everyone. All right, thank you very, very much, everybody, for attending. People from Teachfield, thank you very much for turning out. Uh, Mrs. Kareem Kareem Beltines, or it's Miss Bell. Thank you very much. So, ladies and gentlemen, students of Teachfield, and everybody who is here listening, thank you very much for coming out to our Black History Month lecture presentation by the lecturers from the Rasta University of Higher Life Learning. Could you please put your hands together for the three lecturers?